Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. It's 13 days to go to your GCSE maths exam. 13 days to go, unlucky for some, but not for you because you're doing your maths revision, you're gonna get an amazing grade. But today we're gonna to be looking at geometric proof. So we're gonna look at how to answer geometric proof questions. I'm gonna go through some and there'll be some for you to try as well. So remember to press pause and to try those questions. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at geometric proof. Now in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to go through three geometric proof questions. So I've got one here for you to try. So in a moment, press pause and try this question, and then I'll go through it. And then there'll be two more for you to pause and then to try yourself. Now with geometric proof, there's loads of different styles of questions that can be asked. So it's very important that you try the practice questions today. So let's get started. Here's our first question. It says that the lines LM and PQ are parallel lines. So LM and PQ are parallel. And we've been asked to prove that X plus y is equal to z. So feel free to press pause now and prove that x plus y is equal to z. Okay, so in terms of this question, we want to show that x plus y is equal to z. Now we've got parallel lines. So that means that we might have alternate corresponding angles, things like that. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw another line on the diagram. I'm going to draw the line AB. So this is the line AB. And this line AB, it's going to pass through the point R and it's parallel to L, M and PQ. So this line's parallel to the other two horizontal lines and I'm going to call it AB. So that's the line AB. So we've now got LM, AB and PQ and they're all parallel and AB passes through R and we're going to look now for alternate corresponding angles. Now if you look here we've got the angle X here and we've got remember our alternate angles and some people call them Z angles but remember the proper name is alternate angles so this angle is the same as this angle here. So that angle is equal to X. And here, if we have a look down here, we've got another alternate angle, because remember, P, Q, and A, B are parallel to each other. So that means that if this is angle Y, this here is angle Y as well. So that means that X plus Y is equal to Z. And that's very important in these geometric proof questions that you explain your answer, so let's do that. So I'm going to start off by explaining that this angle here, L, R, A, is equal to angle M, L, R. So let's do that. So our first step was to say that this angle is equal to this angle, they're both equal to X. So angle MLR, MLR equals angle ARL, and they're both equal to X, and that's because they're alternate angles. Okay, next let's explain why these two angles are both Y. So I've just explained angle ARP equals angle RPQ, they're both equal to Y, since they're alternate angles also. And then finally we just need to explain that X plus Y is equal to Z, so let's do that. And I've just explained that angle LRP, this whole angle, is equal to angle LRA plus angle ARP. So in other words, Z is equal to X plus Y. And that's it, and that's what we're asked to show. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so our next question, we've got triangle ABC, and we're told it's an isosceles triangle, and then AB is equal to BC, and we're told that ACD is a straight line. We're told that angle BCD is equal to X degrees, and we've been asked to prove that angle ABC, this angle at the top, is equal to 2X minus 180. So feel free to press pause and to do that now. Okay, so with questions like this, what I like to do is I like to write on what angles I can on the diagram. So before I actually start doing the proof, I'm just going to start. If this is X, well, actually, before we begin, it's an isosceles triangle. AB, AB is equal to BC. So this is our isosceles triangle. There will be its line of symmetry. So this angle is equal to this angle. Now, if this angle here is X, this is a straight line, these two angles. So this would be 180 degrees minus X. So that's the size of that angle. I've just taken it away from 180 degrees. Then this angle will be the same is this one because obviously there's the line of symmetry it's an isosceles triangle so that'd be 180 minus x and then we want to find the size of this angle at the top so we want to find the size of this angle up here now the three angles under the triangle will add together to be 180 degrees so if we add these two angles together and take them away from 180 degrees we'll find the size of this angle now before i actually do that and finish off the question what i'm actually going to do is write down some of the reasons that we've done so far just so we don't forget so the first thing i done was i found the size of this angle here so let's explain that and that's it so just written down that angle ACB, this angle, is equal to 180 degrees minus X, since angle ACB, this angle, and BCD, that angle, add together to be 180 degrees, since the angles on a straight line add together to be 180 degrees. So that's what we done first. Our next step was to say that this angle equals that angle because it's an isosceles triangle, so let's explain that. So I've just explained that angle BAC is equal to 180 minus X degrees since triangle ABC is isosceles and the two angles are equal. Angle BAC is equal to angle ACB. That Those two angles are equal to each other because it's an isosceles triangle. Okay, and then our last step is then to add these two angles and take it away from 180 degrees and find the size of angle ABC and hopefully that'll be what we're looking for. So let's do that. So let's do that, and I'm just gonna call this angle up here Y, and I'm gonna write down that 180 subtract X degrees, 
plus 180 subtract x degrees plus the angle y would have to be equal to 180 degrees okay so this angle plus this angle plus y would have to be equal to 180 degrees so let's find y the sides of angle abc so let's solve this so we're going to get 180 plus 180 so that's 360 and then we've got subtract 2x subtract 2x and then plus y is equal to 180 degrees so we just added these together 180 plus 180 is 360 minus x minus x be minus 2x and we've still got our plus y and that equals 180 and we want to make y the subject the size of this angle so let's add 2x's to both sides so on the left hand side we're left with 360 plus y and on the right hand side we'd have 180 degrees plus 2x but if you have a look here they've got the 2x at the front here so i'm going to put the 2x in front of the 180 so i'm going to write 2x plus 180 degrees now i want to find out what y is so we're going to take away 360 and take away 360 so we'll be left with y on the left hand side on its own and on the right hand side we'll have 2x and then 180 degrees take away 360 be minus 180 so it means that y is equal to and remember y is angle abc is equal to 2x minus 180 degrees that's what we're asked to show therefore angle abc equals 2x minus 180 degrees and that's what we're asked to show and that's it so qed and that's it and if you got that well done okay and let's have a look at one more question so with this time we've got a circle and o is the center of the circle and we're told that ao is a straight line so ao is a straight line we're told that ac is equal to od and we're told the angle oac so angle oac is equal to x and we've been asked to prove the angle doe so angle doe this angle in here this angle is equal to 3x so feel free to press pause now and show that this angle is equal to 3x Okay, so let's read the question again. We've got the AOE is a straight line. Fantastic. AC is equal to OD. So AC, this line here, AC, I'm just going to put a dash on it, is equal to OD. So that length of that line is equal to the length of that line. Actually, that's the radius. OD is the radius. And actually then if OD is the radius, OC is the radius as well. That They're both radii. So they're all the same length for those three lines because AC is the same length as OD. And that's a radius and that's a radius. So that's, that's the same length as the other two. Okay, and we've been told the angle OAC is equal to X. That's labeled force. And we need to find the size of this angle. So if we have a look here, angle AOC is isosceles. And there's our two lines that are the same length. So that means that the line of symmetry would be there. So it means that this angle over here would be X. So Let's explain that. Angle AOC equals angle OAC, and they both equal X as triangle AOC is isosceles. Okay, so that's our first step is to say that those two angles are both equal to X. Okay, next, this angle here. Well, if this is X and this is X, that means that angle ACO, angle ACO would be equal to, well, x plus x is 2x, take that away from 180, would be 180 minus 2x. So it'd be equal to 180 minus 2x. So it's equal to 180 minus 2x, that's the size of angle ACO, as the angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. Okay, so we found the size of that angle. Now let's look at this triangle here, OCD. So this triangle OCD is isosceles as well. And we, it'd be great if we could find the size of this angle. Now ACD is a straight line. I, I should have actually mentioned that in the question. ACD is a straight line as well, apologies. Um, so this is a straight line. So this angle is 180 degrees minus two X. So this angle and this angle must add together to be 180 degrees. So that means that that angle must be two X because they add together to be 180 degrees. So let's explain that angle. And I've just explained that these two angles must add together to be 180 degrees. So that's why that angle is 2x. And if this is 2x, that means that this angle here is 2x. This angle here must be 2x as well. Because this is an isosceles triangle, OC is equal to OD. So this angle here, ODC, is equal to 2x as well. So let's explain that. So I've explained the angle ODC is equal to 2x. This triangle OCD is an isosceles triangle. Okay, now let's find the size of this angle here. Well, to find the size of this angle, we'll add these two angles together, which is 4x, and take that away from 100. 180 degrees. So that means that this angle is 180 minus 4x. That's the size of this angle here. You'd add these two together and take it away from 180 degrees. So let's explain that. So I've just written down angle COD is equal to 180 minus 4x as the angles in that triangle add together to be 180 degrees. And then finally, we wanted to find the size of this angle here. So here we've got a straight line. AOE is a straight line. So that means that x, 180 minus 4x, and this angle, let's just call it y, must add together to be 180 degrees because it's a straight line. So let's find out what y is in Let's explain that. So I've just written down that since AOE is a straight line, x plus 180 minus 4x 
plus y equals 180. And let's just solve that for y and hopefully see this is equal to 3x. So let's do that. So simplifying this, we've got 180. We've got x take away 4x is going to be minus 3x. And then we've got our plus y is equal to 180. So we want to find out what y is. So let's take away the 180 from both sides. So that's going to leave us with minus 3x plus y equals 0. And then if we add 3x to both sides, so that would give us y equals 3x. And that's it, QED. And that's it. And we've explained all our steps as we've gone through. And if you've done that, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at geometric proof. Geometric proof is one of those topics where it'd be useful to be confident with some other topics as well. So such as your congruent triangles and knowing the conditions for congruent triangles, such as side, 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 and so on. And if you get the court marriage revision cards, there is a card on congruent triangles, and this get all the conditions for the congruent triangles. And it'd be useful to know those and to learn those off by heart. So your congruent triangles, your similar triangles, so knowing the condition for similar triangles, angle, angle, angle. Also knowing your circle theorem. Circle theorems might be quite useful for geometric proof because it might be a question that involves a circle theorem and you've got to prove something and the circle theorems might be quite useful for it as well. So it's important to know those topics as well because they'll be helpful for your geometric proof questions. Now with geometric proof questions, if you've got a diagram given to you, it can be quite useful to draw and write on it, for perhaps if you're dealing with angles, the missing angles on the diagram. We make sure with your geometric proof questions that if you're asked to explain and give reasons, that you are explaining and given reasons. So are you using the fact that the angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees? And you write that down as you're going through and giving your reasons. So that's quite important whenever you're dealing with geometric proof questions. Now also with geometric proof questions, we're not entirely sure what diagram the examiner is going to use. You know, is it going to be a question that involves circle theorems? Is it going to be a one where you're dealing with congruent triangles and so on? So if you have a look at the practice questions today, I've got a variety of questions for you to try. So it'll be quite useful for you in terms of boosting your confidence in different types of geometric proof questions. But I really hope you find this video useful. There's 13 days to go to your GCSE maths exam. If you have found the video useful, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And just keep up the hard work. You're doing really, really well. With that big push between now and the exam, you're going to do really well. I'll see you later. Cheers. Bye.